Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to rise and join my colleagues in expressing support for the motion before the Honorable House. I think all my colleagues would have expressed our support for the fire and emergency services and the tremendous work that would have been done over the years and in particular, Mr. Speaker, as outlined by the member for Vifort North during the period of the COVID crisis. Mr. Speaker, I think it is no secret that throughout St. Lucia, whenever weekends come, we all worry about what can happen on our roads, what can happen in various mass gatherings. And we all know that the first line of response to any incident is the fire and emergency services. And when you listen to the presentation by the member for Castries East and Prime Minister, it really gives you confidence to, in saying that we are recognizing the critical work that has been done by the fire and emergency services and that we are prepared to invest in the services. It is a statement of confidence in the service is a statement that we recognize your criticality for the functioning, not just for dealing with fires, as pointed out by the member from Vifort North, the health services, and certainly even our tourism sector. My contribution is short, Mr. Speaker, but I want to point out, Mr. Speaker, that when you hear sometimes the criticisms about the health and security levy, and forget all the hypocrisy over it. Because the member from Castle East showed in this house that there actually was legislation passed by the opposition for the introduction of a similar levy. We all know that. But now it is done, they are criticizing it. And there's a lot being said about how it is affecting poor people. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that this levy is what is going to help us to finance this, um, repay this load, Mr. Speaker. This is what is going to help us repay this load. And the member from Cassius is announced very soon, all ambulance fees will be removed. Think about it. The number of St. Lucians who did not call an ambulance because they could not afford to pay. The amount of persons who were affected because they had to pay fees. Because of the levy, Mr. Speaker, we are improving the health system in St. Lucia. And St. Lucians deserve a better health care system. Deserve it. And when we came into government and we reviewed the figures and saw how much more was needed to ensure that the hospitals can be run, that medication can be sought, and that we can improve the health service, we knew we had no other option. But to say to every single St. Lucian, now is the time for you to contribute to having a better health care system. Every single one must contribute to it. I can tell you, and I noted, they were teasing and saying that the health and security level was introduced because he let complain and you know they complain about people making demands. It showed you the insensitivity, Mr. Speaker, that when you as a parliamentary representative and all of us around this table can speak of constituents coming and asking for assistance with medical bills, for chemotherapy, for MRI, for medication. And when we stand in this house and say, because there are people out there not getting sufficient health care, we need to put in place a mechanism to raise money to improve the health care system, they criticize it, chastise it, and even want to demonstrate against it, Mr. Speaker. That is the nature of the people that we're dealing with. And today, Mr. Speaker, they will find some way to criticize the investment in the fire and emergency services. But we must not be deterred. And the member from Castle South East made some very valuable suggestions to the service as to how they can improve on their service delivery. And I think those were important um, suggestions, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to make one final point and, and to say to the service how pleased I was to hear the Prime Minister mention that officers will be trained up to the TVET to get TVET certification. 
Now that's important. We can talk about the psychosocial support and all the equipment that they will get. But it's an opportunity for them to earn revenue by running regular courses for St. Lucians to get certified as firefighters and emergency personnel. That they can go and work overseas now, having acquired the certification. So it's not just about training persons for the service. It's about training St. Lucians who wish to have such qualifications. They may never work with the fire and emergency services. They can go to other islands, other countries, and boast that they have a recognized level of qualification and cause them to be more employable. So it becomes, for the fire service, an opportunity to raise revenue. It becomes an opportunity for us to train our people to become more marketable and, of course, to gain employment elsewhere. So I was really pleased to hear this, and I want to encourage the fire and emergency services to make that a reality and advertise it widely so St. Lucians can get an opportunity and get that level of qualification. So I join all my colleagues and certainly congratulate the Prime Minister and the fire and emergency services for taking this bold step to modernize the service and to ensure that St. Lucia gets world-class um, service. Thank you very much.